Okay. All right. Now, now remember last time we um, we've reached the uh, we've reached the wreck of the uh, general's flagship, the Ulysses. And it's time to see what's inside. Now, as you may recall, we have to deactivate the DNA bomb that is abor already aboard. Oh man, I forgot about DNA bombs. Yes. Yeah, so what's left for you to upgrade? Not much. At this point, my money is just basically going towards... As the game goes up, towards the end of the game, I start getting a lot more... A lot less shy about using my high-powered, like, special weapons, just because, you know, I can afford it. Right. And also, the thing to keep in mind is, you don't want to be too sh uh, You don't want to be too hesitant to use them, because using the high... The cool special abilities is often the way to get, um, more points by doing cool skill shots with them. Right. So... So skillfully used, the uh, the powered shots can kind of pay for themselves, or at least you know partially. So, so don't don't hold back. John Markley's tip of the day: don't hold back. Just blow your entire load immediately. Oh, here's. Yep, we killed over 700 people in that opening segment. <laughs> Thanks, but Serrano starts moralizing. I think the distinction of they had a family is always a little strange because everyone had a family. <laughs> Bog out. I'm sure that would hurt more if it wasn't true. <laughs> Now, I am... The pistol is perhaps the single worst weapon to use on these guys. Because, you know, you need to hit... To kill them, you need to hit, like, fairly small, precise spots on them. So you're much better off with the shotgun, you know, where you don't need to be precise, or, like, with the, the carbine. Ooh, that makes me laugh that's, every time. That's the comeback where I don't know what to say. Yeah, how do you, there is no comeback to that. <laughs> really. Oh! So something I can appreciate about the design is that <laughs> you're making the comment that, um... The more, the cooler things you do, the more points you get. Yeah. And now that I think about it, this is one of those games that encourages, uh, it's like a circular feedback where the more enemies you kill, you're not, you're not losing resources, you're gaining them. That's true, yeah, it's sort of a virtuous cycle if you, um, if you, if you, you when you kill guys, it gives you the capacity to... Kill more. Yeah. So, as I said, you know, don't be shy about using the special weapons. Because there's... Resupply pods are pretty frequent, so you're on, you know, you're not going to be, like, you know, spending large amounts of time between rearming. So what does he not need another battery or? No, he, his charge. No, he he's pretty fully charged. He just needed it that one time to get started. Ah. Uh. 
Because at that point, they just basically just finished assembling him from spare parts. That's true. It's almost as if these pods are put there by some sort of designer. <laughs> well, to be fair, they did say this was... So Remember, this was... They were there as part of some sort of, like, ill-conceived training exercise, whereby the... The dead... The final Echo Commandos would be raided on their ability to kill people in gruesomely Baroque ways, and then be rewarded with supply points. Can you imagine if the army trained soldiers this way? <laughs> like army rangers were encur <laughs> encouraged. Just put the put them in like a just put them in like a really in like a really violent area and just have them fight the natives. <laughs> and hey, and like if just dump them in Australia, <laughs> fight the wildlife. T teach teach a bear to tap out. And you get thousands of points. And like you know, they get they get higher valuations if they you know kill guys while drunk or <laughs> kill a guy by like kicking him into a plane engine instead of just shooting him. <laughs> nice way to conserve ammo, soldier. <laughs> there, there you go. It makes perfect sense. Okay. Now it's interesting considering how ludicrously violent is this is. The lead, uh, the head designer on this, Adrian Kur, uh, Polish person, is, is most recently did um, uh, I I have no idea how to pronounce his name. I don't want to butcher it on in the middle <laughs> of the video. His most recent uh, game is actually the uh, Vanishing of Ethan Carter, which is like this sort of slow, spooky, atmospheric psychological horror game. Huh. Pretty interesting from what I've seen of it. Yeah. I have I've not tried it. As a, as a general rule, when the game throws in that you know that tooltip about how you can unleash the thumper, you should probably unleash the thumper. <laughs> it's it knows what it's talking about. And the Thumper's a good example of, like, how you can, you know, the super weapons can kind of pay for themselves, because you get, you know, there's all sorts of points you can get for wiping a bunch of dudes out with it at once. Hmm. First time we've been on a spacecraft since the beginning of the game. What are you looking at? And despite having been shot down, this one is arguably in not really in sh any shittier condition than the one Grayson was flying around in, so... It's true. I love this game. He's a fun kind of crazy. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh shit, the bodies. That ain't helping. <laughs> I don't even need to. We don't even really need to do commentary when he's up, when he's in the party. Took down your battle liner is what we did. Dropped your prized warbird with a class D specter. Now there's an idea. Let's play with General Serrano. <laughs> I don't think we know anybody that, uh, well, anything enough. <laughs> Sadly. That, I'm pretty sure YouTube has guidelines on hate speech, so. <laughs> but. This. There are some points on, on the Ulysses, and I should mention for everyone everyone watching, this is pre-recorded. I'm not playing this live. A couple points, I, I get kind I get kind of lost in the Ulysses. But yeah, they a little. There was a little bit of uh, sort of, I guess, foreshadowing back there. They mentioned not all of the escape pods have lo had had launched. Right. That 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 comes up. Hmm. There we go. You see, I wandered around like an idiot intentionally, so that when we did the actual commentary later, I'd be able to mention have time to mention that. If you shoot. Now, now, you know how he said no you, no guns? He wasn't whistling Dixie, as you're about to learn. <laughs> and I'd like to say this was I did this intentionally just to show what would happen, but I can't actually say that. <laughs> Any second. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it just... It just slipped my mind. It, it, within the five seconds that he said it, you know. It's... A Krill and Night Trial is a real gas, by the way, and it really is very toxic and flammable. I don't know if it would actually go off that catastrophically, but it is pretty dangerous. Hmm. There, now this, this is how you do it to not die. I should just call this episode, John is bad at bullet storm, probably. <laughs> Splat. Now, as you may recall, some of these these burnouts are actually were originally the tourists who were left behind on the planet. Right. And during the radiation storm, they took shelter in the underground caverns, which were filled with horrendous shield generator toxic waste. <laughs> because this is the most poorly designed resort ever. <laughs> that can't be emphasized enough. <laughs> 